As advertised, Jake, Manu, and Ishmael are with us, and we will start right off with questions. Start right down here, left-hand side. Thank you. Uh, John Werner, Waco Tribune. Uh, this is for Jake. Um, have you had much of a chance to look at USC yet, and do they look similar to anybody you faced? Um, sorry. Uh, we had a chance to look at them last night. Uh, they had a scout prepared uh, for all of our possible opponents, so we hopped right into that and uh, went over some of their stuff today. So we've gotten pretty familiar with personnel and uh, some of the actions they like to run. So uh, as far as being similar to anybody, um, Maybe Iowa State, because they just have a lot of guys who can really shoot it, but uh, they're a little bit bigger. Um, Benny Boatwright is a matchup problem. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin's a really good player. They're, uh, they're a good team, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to the challenge. Right in the center. Janine, thank you. Hi, guys. Congratulations again. Um, other than X's and O's, or schematically, what jumps off the film when you watch how USC plays, how they manage to do what they do? You know, what, what stands out? Maybe intangibles or however you want to describe it? Mano, you first, and then Ishmael. Uh, they're a very talented team. They play freely, you know. Um, <clears throat> They have a lot of talents. They have, they have a lot of shooters and good post players, so it makes it uh, hard to guard them. Um, he, he said what I was going to say. Um, they have a great point guard. Uh, Boat rights. Uh, I mean, I know he's NBA. Everybody's you know, saying he's an NBA guy. Uh, he's a great player. Um, they have a shooter, I believe, on the 30. That's, real, that's extreme. He can shoot anywhere on the court. Uh, he had big shots last game to win the game. So. Um, they're just a great team. Um, we watched the game and had film, um, walked through a lot of their sets. I know they're going to add more wrinkles to it, so um, just go do whatever we have to do, execute. For Ish, Ish, John Morris, Baylor Radio, what, what does it mean for you as a senior to still be alive and still be moving on in the NCAA tournament? And is there a load off your shoulders having won that first round game yesterday? Uh, I'm sorry with that last question. It's um, load is off. Uh, I'm not worried about the past two years or three years or whatever people say. Um, and with me being a senior, it's just a blessing. I mean, I know I've seen a lot of seniors uh, leave recently, which is tough. Um, and I mean, just having guys like Manu and Jake by my side to, you know, take me, take us a long way. And yeah, it's not just excited. I'm still playing. My career's not over yet. I want to. I want to end this with a win. So we're gonna center them. Go to the aisle. Uh, Ish Ben, maybe with the Dallas Morning News, kind of to follow up on that. Uh, how much did kind of those early exits weigh on y'all going into the tournament? As much as y'all, you know, thought about it. Say that again. How much did the early exits in the first, the last two years weigh on y'all heading into this tournament? Um, it's just motivation. I mean, I know we're young. Our generation is on, you know, social media, and that's all we were getting. Uh, and that's all we were, they were preaching to us. It's no first round. They were saying this two months ago. Um, and we took it to heart, and we have a lot more to do. We're not done yet. Uh, our confidence is up, and we're going to continue to play with a chip on our shoulder. Paul Catalina, ESPN Central Texas. Manu, yesterday was your first start back. How was it in the rhythm, getting in the rhythm, and how you feeling, and the ankle and everything? Um, <clears throat> it felt good uh, coming back with my team. Start again uh, was fun. I was pretty excited. My ankle was it, it was okay, not 100 percent, but mentally I was good. And uh, man, our bench did a great job. Uh, I didn't uh, play my best game, but. Um, Jay came in, did a great job. TJ Al Nooney uh, picked us up, gave us a little, uh, a, a huge spark off the bench. So that helped me a lot. You know how people talk about like tournament destiny or magic or whatever you want to call it. I'm just curious to get each of your thoughts on is USC come across as one of those teams that you kind of have to be wary of 
because of their two improbable wins now. Just curious about your thoughts about whatever you want to call that. <laughs> Jake will be first, Manu, then Ishmael. Um, I feel like, I mean, we had a few comeback wins early in the season at, in the Bahamas. And uh, when you have a few wins like that, it definitely sparks a, a sense of belief in your team. I remember when we, uh, we came back down 22 to Louisville, uh, it, really, it really boosts your confidence. And uh, I mean, credit to them, I think 12 of their 26 wins, something like that, has been down, either, either down or double digit deficit, something crazy. So, I mean, credit to them, and that, uh, that shows they have some resilience and uh, some fight to them, and uh, they don't get down when the chips are down. So that's, you know, that's an awesome accomplishment for them. But as far as we look at it, uh, I mean, every game's going to be different. You know, if they came in and go, if they started the game off on a huge run or we started the game off on a huge run, the narrative would uh, shift pretty quickly as to whose tournament magic, per se, would be uh, going at the time. So I don't think uh, that's weighing too much on our mind. Um, yeah, like Jake said, it's a great team, um, but uh, I think we're the team uh, they have to worry about. I think in, in, in the beginning of the year, nobody would have thought we would even be in a tournament. So uh, uh, it's March and uh, anything can happen. My turn. Yes. <laughs> um, we just can't look over any, we can't overlook anybody. Uh, like you said, this is March. Uh, anything is possible. Um, I know a lot of teams that looked over look past other teams and prepare for teams that they're supposed to play the next round. And they're no longer with us, but we can't look over. We can't overlook anybody, and they can't overlook us. So it's going to be a great one. We are halfway through the session. Next question's up. Uh, Manu, you ended up uh, in a – Baylor ended up in a region with Miami. Uh, what was that experience like for you? And did you end up talking to any of those guys? Or kind of what was that – what were the interactions like with you and some of the guys you might have played there with? Uh, <clears throat> I haven't seen any of the guys here, um, but um, I always, you know, I always talk to some of them on the team. We have a, still a great relationship. Obviously, it was a great experience for me. Two years uh, in Miami gave me the chance they came here at Baylor, so I'm very gra grateful for that. Um, not so they lost against uh, Michigan State, but um, it's, it's still a great team. It, it was fun uh, watching them play. Jake and Manu, what does it say about your team this year that guys like Al and TJ can come off the bench and have the kind of games that they had yesterday? Jake, lead us off, please. Um, I think I would start off by saying that uh, Al and TJ are two of our most talented players. And uh, if you if you had the opportunity to come watch us in practice, there'd be some days you'd walk away thinking Terry Maston was the best big guy in the gym. And uh, when you have two NBA big guys as your teammates, that's an, uh, that's an impressive thing to say about anybody. So uh, his, his performance yesterday didn't, didn't surprise us. And uh, Al yesterday, too. Al was you know two-year starter, uh, been a big part of what we wanted to do, uh, faced some adversity this year, rebounded from it. And uh, as a credit to him, he's come back even better, been shooting the ball great, uh, been a great teammate. And uh, we were all really happy to see him. Uh, you know, really pick us up yesterday and make some big plays. And uh, those those two uh, have both rebounded from some adversity this year, and we're proud of them, happy for them. Yeah, <clears throat> they both had a great game um, yesterday. Uh, but like Jake said, um, didn't surprise anybody, I think, on the team. Because, we, we, I mean, you can come watch practice, and then they can go off like that any time in practice. So it's it's always Great to have people like that coming off the bench and, get, and give you a spark, you know, when you struggle, too. So it was great. Anything else? A gentleman from Baylor. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Good luck. Scott Drew will be next at 155.
Head coach of the Baylor Bears is here, Scott Drew. He's got a date with USC tomorrow, and he's going to he's going to make an opening statement on that game, and then we'll go to questions. Scott, please. Well, we're excited to be here to answer questions today. I know uh, um, uh, the benefit of playing the early game yesterday is we got to. Uh, uh, be able to relax and uh, get some rest and watch all the exciting games as far as um, SC goes. Uh, anyone that advances uh, uh, to the second round is obviously a, a very good team. Uh, Andy does a great job uh, X and O wise um, and uh, poses a lot of challenges, especially in short turnarounds because their offense is uh, uh, a little different. They, they run a lot of different sets. Um, as far as our team goes, uh, the good thing is uh, I think uh, um, after yesterday's game and, and being able to get the uh, jitters out, hopefully uh, 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 we'll be able to be a little more efficient in the beginning of the game and not, not turn it over so much. So that's all I got. Questions for the head coach? Start right down here. Thank you. John Werner, Michael Tribune. Um, uh, Coach Anfield said, uh, you guys know each other fairly well, I mm -hmm. guess. Uh, and uh, I guess also, uh, do you see similarities with his team here at USC to, to maybe Florida Gulf Coast? Well, I think uh, um, the shoot, shooting the three like they do, uh, uh, their offense, the way they run it, uh, they get a lot of opportunities at the rim. And with the great athletes that he has, that, that usually leads to a lot of the dunks. So um, you see similarities as far as that 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 manner goes. Threes and dunks. On your left, Janine. Hi, Hi Coach. Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, what stands out to you, what jumps off the page about USC in how they do what they do? Not mm -hmm. necessarily the X's and O's, mm -hmm. but what do you see when you watch them play? Mm -hmm. well, I think it's their, their resilience uh, to be down double digits 13 times and come back and win. I remember in the beginning of the year for a while there, we, we led the nation in comeback wins from being down at halftime. So uh, I don't know who wants to be up at halftime. Maybe it's better if you're down in this game. But um, I think uh, uh, their resilience, and because they do shoot so many threes, they're never out of a game, even if they, if they are, find themselves down. One thing that is interesting, both of us started out the year so hot they didn't lose their first game till I believe December 30th, and we were us and Gonzaga were the last two teams before we lost a game. So uh, I think both of us did a great job in the non-conference, and then I know they got a little banged up, we got a little banged up, and I think both of us are peaking right now again. Scott, they played in that first four game the other night. Is that an <laughs> advantage or a disadvantage? I mean, they've got some momentum going, so that, that's got to be at least something. Well, if you think about fatigue, you would have thought yesterday, second half, they would have, that's when it sh would have showed up, but they shot lights out. And nowadays, I think uh, with exempt tournaments, three games in three days, conference tournaments, three games in three days, AU basketball, three games in one day, uh, these guys can go all day long. I think it's us adults that need rest. Over here in the left hand sky. Scott, you're uh, connected to one of the all-time great buzzer beaters in NCAA tournament mm -hmm. history. We haven't really had that through the first two days. Do you have any thoughts on why that's been the case, some of these finishes? Well, when, you, when you're preparing your team, that's the only bad side of things. You don't get a chance to watch many other games because you're watching so much film of your team and the opponent. Uh, I, I would think uh, – um, I know there were some games where, especially early on, from what I from what I've heard, uh, there wasn't a lot of separation until maybe later in the game. So, uh, and there wasn't for the first time someone that won by what more than twenty uh, uh, in the first day. Or uh, I know someone had mentioned that. So my point is, I think we've had close games. We just haven't had uh, uh, a lot of buzzer beaters. Um, as long as if we do have one, we're on the right side of it. I'm good with it. Uh, otherwise, I'd prefer not to. <laughs> and, and the thing about March is if you're in it long enough, you're going to have great experiences and, and tough ones. My brother's is probably my all-time favorite memory. And then, uh, um, you know, us coaches' sons are always partial to other coaches' sons. So uh, I'm happy for R.J. Hunter hitting that buzzer beater against us, but um, obviously that was a tougher, tougher side of things for me. 
right back down here. Thank you. Scott, in some ways, is maybe a second game a little easier to prepare for, you know, once you kind of get over that, that hurdle of the first game? Well, I think in the, the first game, you do so much more prep work, and there is more jitters in that first game. I think the second game, uh, coaches don't have as much time to, to mess up their guys, so they get to play more, and they're a little more relaxed. So I think players always like the second game better. Al said yesterday that the way the flow of the, the game went for him without having a whole lot of complex things to do kind of opened it up for him. Uh, that's obviously not going to happen all the time, but mm -hmm. uh, how, how, do you, how do you recreate that and still have the, the structure of the plays calling and all that stuff? Well, I think more it was the flow of the game. It was an up and down game. We were in transition a lot. And you'll find more of that with uh, teams that you're not as familiar with, but at the same time, um, that's because New Mexico State liked to play an up and down game and rather than uh, a half court game. So uh, with, with SC and us, both of us uh, uh, like to play in transition when it's there. But why both of us have won games is we can play in the half court as well. So I think you have two teams that uh, uh, um, have a lot of similarities, a lot of great athletes, and uh, a lot of good players. Right back down here on the left. Thank you. Scott, do you maybe see USC as a little bit of an underrated team as an 11 C that it had to go through a play-in game? Well, well, one thing I know about uh, uh, the NCAA tournament, uh, uh, I'm going into this year, I think since the tournament expanded to 68, 5, and 12 were even as far as win-loss record. To me, I, I say that every year, it doesn't matter your number. If you're in the tournament, you've won a lot of games, you've got talented players, you're well coached. So uh, I really don't look at the numbers as much. Uh, I think everyone that's in it is, is more than capable of winning any game, especially with the parity. Um, but you look at USC, they were one of the best teams in the country at the beginning of the year. Then they had some injuries. And when you do, it affects everybody. And now they're healthy and they're back to being one of the best in the country. Again, to go undefeated until one of the last six or how many teams, that's, that's quite a tribute out of 351. I know you guys don't have a lot of questions today because it's nice out. You're trying to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else for Scott? All right, we're going to let him go and get out of here. Okay, thank you. Guys you guys have a good day. <laughs> Student athletes are next at 220 USC student athletes